All right, now we're going to talk about the Fourier cosine and Fourier sine series. The effort of expanding a function that we have, the goal is to expand this f of x, right? Um, in a Fourier series is uh, reduced significantly when I have this f of x in a special form where it's the either um, even or odd, okay? So that makes my life a little bit easier. Before I go out and talk about the Fourier series expansion, I want to talk about the general, what am I talking about over here when I say even, when I say odd, and I'll talk about a little bit of their uh, property as well, okay? The first thing I want to highlight in here is, let's say that I have, uh, and you know, f of x is equal to x squared as an example, right? So if I plot this, I'll go ahead and plot this, you'll see that it's going to be something like this. It's not perfect drawing, but you, you see that this is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So this is called an even function, all right? So if I go ahead and plot another one like this, coordinate axis, let's say whether I can do a good job now. And now I will plot f of x is equal to x cubed, okay? So what happens in here is I have something like this, and then I will have something like that, okay? Um, so now what is going on over here is take a look at this case. So it's like this, right? Look at this. And then it was being symmetric over here. So now this is like asymmetric in a sense. It goes from the first quadrant to the third quadrant. It's asymmetric. And this is mentioned as odd. That's what we mean when, when we say even function or an odd function. Okay. One important thing from the trigonometric cosine and sine functions is if I have a cosine of theta, so what I want to do is actually analyze this a little bit in depth because this is important. We are going to use this a lot in the Fourier series. So I'm not sure how you remember this or not, but the thing in here is this is the cosine, this is the sine, right? And if I go ahead and pick a particular angle of theta over here, this is the theta. And if I go ahead and write a negative of theta, okay? Um, so you can see in here, so look at, at the cosine, it ends up at the same point. So the cosine of theta will be equal to cosine of minus theta, okay? And for this reason, you can see over here, um, even functions, when I put the negative to it, it, I get the same value, right? So from this reason, this is called even, right? On the other hand, let's look at the sine. Sine is the y-axis in this particular one, right? So it's here and it is here. So you can see that I get a negative of it, right? So for this reason, if I write over here, sine of theta will be equal to minus of sine of minus theta, okay? So for this reason, we call this out. So I'm going to use this a lot, this, this, and this, all right? But before going forward, let's also discuss uh, properties of even and odd functions. Not something that I didn't even touch the Fourier series just yet, right? I'm only discussing about an even and an odd function, okay? The first thing I will have is this. If I have a product of two even functions like this, I will get an even function. E stands for, you know, even. O stands for odd, the way that I write, okay? If I have the product of two odd functions, now I have odd times odd, then I will get an even, okay? Let's look at the third one. The product of an even and an odd function, even and odd, obviously that can change places, odd times even. This will end up with an odd, okay? And the fourth one I wanna highlight here is the sum, or you can say difference as well. It's simply, you know, uh, equivalent to each other from this aspect um, of two even functions is even. And from the same logic, we're gonna go odd, plus minus odd will give me odd as well, okay? Please note that these are not zeros, okay? These are just odds, the first letter that I have for odd. Now I am, uh, you know, approaching a little bit towards what I wanna highlight with this. So let's say that I have a function like this, minus a to a. Again, I'm not talking about the a0 uh, Fourier series coefficient, but general, you know, let's say I have an integral from minus a to a and an f of x, right? And let's say that there are two cases. One case is this is even, okay? So what will happen in here, look at the, this case over here, what will happen is I can actually take the integral because as you remember, the integral is just simply the area be below this, right? So I can take the integral from zero to a in this particular case, and then I can simply sum, multiply this by two because the negative will have the same, okay? So this is even, then I can simply write this way, 
2 uh, times 0 to a as opposed to minus a to a f of x dx. So now let's also look at the odd case. Okay, let's say that this is now odd and I'm giving the example of this case. Okay, what is the integral of this segment for instance over here versus what's the integral of this segment over here? I can almost hear you saying that hey they are the same, they are the same. You are right, you will be right. So if I sum them up what will I'm gonna get? Zero. Now you can have a better feeling about this. Now you can see I see a zero. Whenever I see a zero in mathematics, I like it, right? Because I can get rid of that particular term. So now, okay, I'm actually at the point where I can go ahead and apply this to the Fourier series, okay? Um, so the first thing, I will look at the, the, the uh, given a symmetric interval. Do you remember that? We were doing from minus P to P. So I'm having a symmetric interval. And uh, there will be another uh, segment coming up. In that case, I will analyze the case where it's not symmetric. Okay, let's say that I have 0 to L. What am I going to do? I'll discuss that. But first, I'm going to start with the symmetrical case. So if I have an even function, this is very important. So let's start by that. If I have an even function, and let's write the um, Fourier series coefficient, the easiest one, 1 over P minus P to P, F of X, DX. Okay, if this is even, it's up here. I don't have to talk a lot. So you can see over here that I will do simply, I'm not sure this is a huge improvement from what I was starting with, but I can do simply that. Okay? So instead of looking at the interval from minus p to p, I can look from 0 to p and then multiply by 2 because they are symmetric. Um, okay, let's look at a n. Let's write the formula 1 by p minus p to p f of x times cosine of n pi x by p dx. Remember that? Now you will see why I showed you uh, the properties. Okay? I'm saying that this is even. Right? That's what I have. How about cosine? Even. So I'm multiplying two even functions. Forget about integral for now. I'm multiplying or taking the product of two even functions. So what I'm going to get is what is even times even, I got myself an even, right? So I have myself an even function. So it now it looks pretty much like the a0, right? I don't see much improvement because at the end of the day, I still have an even function. So it will look similar to a0, right? So I will get myself two by p, zero to p, f of x, cosine of n pi x by p dx. Now I feel a little bit pessimistic, but let's go start to the uh, BN as well, because I was uh, kind of hopeful that this is going to make my life so much easier. But so far, it simply uh, allowed me to only look at the 0 to P and the multiply by 2. Um, you know, nice, but uh, you know, we'll see. Let's look at the sign, N pi x by P dx. I will do the very similar treatment. This is even. And from, I'm not going to go up there again, but I showed you that uh, this is odd, right? So what is happening odd times even? So odd, even. I got myself an odd, okay? So now this combination of this became an odd. You see, this is like, like this, right? So now this is odd. I'm going to get zero. Because remember, f of x times sine of n pi x by p, I'm going to call this g of x. So it doesn't really matter whether it's f of x or g of x. But the point is, now this is odd. The odd integral, a symmetric integral from minus p to p, for this particular case, it will end up with zero. Now I'm getting to see the benefit of it. Okay? Instead of dealing with three Fourier series coefficients of a0, an, and bn, now I only need to worry about a0 and an. Right? So bn is out. And let's be real. Um, it's much harder to evaluate a n and b n compared to a zero. So this is even better than you know two thirds of the effort. So before I go forward, let me do the odd as well and see what happens for that particular case. So a zero will be equal to one by p integral minus p to p f of x dx. Okay, right off the bat, I'm happy. Look, look, gone. Right off the bat, I don't have to worry about a zero. Let's start with an2, an, this time around it will be 1 by p minus p to p f of x cosine of n pi x by p dx, okay, this is odd, that's how I'm analyzing this, this is even, odd times even, you see it's very similar to this now, what did I get? 
Nice. So I'm kind of very happy now, right? So I have a zero and a n is zero. So a I don't have to worry about neither of them. Okay. Let's look at b n and hoping that that will be zero. Well, that's pushing it too far. Minus p to p f of x sine and pi x by p dx. Let's do the same treatment over here. This is odd. This is odd. So the multiplication of two odd functions will give me even, unfortunately, right? Let's go back to the properties. So see this second one, odd, odd, I got even. As I have an even then, what I have to do is I will simply have to evaluate this this way, two by p integral zero to p f of x sine and pi x by p dx. So then let's go ahead and write in a neat form. This is kind of it what I want to cover. But you know the even uh, function on an interval minus p to p is called the cosine series expansion. Okay, why? Because cosine itself is even. All right. So then if I look at this uh, form, here's what's going to look like: a zero by two plus summation n is equal to one to infinity. I will get myself a n times cosine and pi by p x. Okay, I don't have to be on component y because bn is zero when it is even, right? And I can write here a zero will be equal to two by p integral zero to p f of x dx, while a n will be two by p zero to p f of x cosine and pi by p x times the x, right? So that will be for, uh, you know, even functions. If I look at the odd, and this odd function, the Fourier series of an odd function on the interval minus p to p, is called the sine series. Um, you can see why we are calling that, because the sine is an odd itself, right? And f of x, actually, I drop a zero, uh, so I only have b n, so I will have n is equal to 1 to infinity. I will have b n times sine and pi by x, all right? Why, where p n is equal to 2 by p 0 to p, not minus p, f of x times the same thing with the sign and pi p x dx, okay? So this, uh, you know, this uh, black font is for cosine expansion. This is for sine expansion. So that's really all you have to, uh, you have to know. And I'll, I'll show you everything related to it, okay? So now in this next segment, what I will do is I'll come back with, uh, you know, a couple of uh, questions to solve some examples to illustrate how this is done. Okay. All right. Thank you for watching this segment. I'll catch up with you soon. Take care.